2064. This is a video that has pretty much been long overdue. I was supposed to really record this about two weeks ago when there was this guy who asked me on my profile, well, on one of my videos, about the port on the back of the Game Truck Pro 3.3. I told him I would make a video telling him how to use it, so here it is. But um, I'm not going to go give you a detailed rundown of GameShark Software Co-Creator yet because I have a whole video devoted to that and I have that planned and in the making. So I'm going to just use a whole video to discuss that part. Now, I will tell you how to get your computer communicating with the GameShark Pro. And I will also tell you what you need to do it. You're going to need a parallel cable. Now, I got my parallel cable at mycablemark.com, but and you can probably get one too, but I've heard of people using a uh, parallel to USB adapter cable to use this uh, GameTark software co-creator software, and um, it's pretty interesting. It's like a parallel cable end on one end of the cable, and on the other end, like it's like a USB. So you plug it into your USB port and it pretty much works like a uh, parallel cable. Uh, I have not had any experience with using that sort of thing, so I'm not really sure that I would recommend doing that. But if you do not have a parallel cable uh, receiver on your computer, which is the same as a printer port, uh, well, old style printer port, 15 pin, uh, if you don't have that, then I would say the USB to parallel adapter is definitely the way to go. Uh, you can probably find that also on mycablemark.com. That's mycablemark.com. Now, I guess you want to know how to do this. So, uh, I guess we should get started. Okay, so I didn't really go into a detailed rundown on what the parallel port on the back of the GameShark Pro actually did, other than communicate with the computer. It actually does a lot more once you have communication with your PC or computer or Mac or whatever. Um, then you can actually dump code lists from your GameShark onto your computer and then upload code lists from your computer back onto your GameShark Pro. So that's really pretty neat, especially if your GameShark Pro gets corrupted and it still is able to access the menu. You can actually upload like a previous dump of your code list into your GameShark and it will uncorrupt it. So apparently the GameShark Pro firmware relies entirely on the code list structure and if that gets corrupt then your game shark's corrupt kinda cheat but you know oh well it's not licensed by nintendo so what do you expect not that detail is trash or anything well it's not detail it's like some other detail like company from way back when but anyhow let's get started huh so you're going to need about five things to do this you're going to need a parallel cable, which looks like this. It has the blue thing on the end. It has 15 holes. You're going to need a Nintendo 64, <laughs> of course, a Nintendo 64 game, Nintendo 64 Game Shark Pro with a parallel port on the back, and a Nintendo 64 controller. So now to get started, we're going to take our Nintendo 64 Game Shark Pro and we're going to plug it into our N64 here very gently don't want to damage the terminals, this console is awesome now, next you take the parallel cable and you just insert it into the back of the port there you go in just gently put it in okay next you take your game you stack that on top of your game shark just like that. Next you're going to need a screen to see what's going on on your game shark. Sorry I didn't mention that earlier. Wait for it to power on. Okay. So now to test the game shark pro, you're gonna start up with the N64 here and it should count down. If it doesn't, you need to turn the console off and pry around on the game shark until it contacts the N64 game cartridge terminals terminals. Once you get it detected, it should, if all goes well, count down from eight 
into from five, you know, to zero. And it's a little bit finicky today. There you go. And once you get that going, you'll see the Game Shark Pro splash screen on your screen up there. Now, as you notice, my Game Shark has the green LED. And when I start up the Game Shark, it taps down from 5 to 0. Now, if you don't have an LED, that's fine. As long as you have the parallel port, it should work with your computer and everything. Um, the LED ones are pretty useful because it's nice to see the countdown and stuff to know um, if anything's corrupted. You can like judge in the amount of time it takes for your game chart to count down. Uh, if it, there's like skipping between numbers and some numbers lag, there's space between them, then um, it's probably that your game chart is corrupted or something like that. But um, I have an LED game chart, so I'm going to do that. If you don't have an LED game chart, it's fine too because you can just use the screen to see your menu come up uh, just to make sure that everything's okay. So we're going to power on. And there's the screen up there. Now, since you are on this screen, when you have this plugged in your computer, it automatically connects through the parallel port to the PC. You don't have to do anything. As long as you can access the main menu, you can flash stuff to your Game Shark and from it. So next thing we're going to do is go over to our PC here. Log in. And there you go. So now we're going to go down to start. And documents random files game shark pro and these files are able to be downloaded in my game shark pro 3.3 demonstration video on youtube somewhere you can find the link in my videos or you can find that video in my videos and uh, it pretty much shows up when you search game shark pro in 64 on google as well so google never lies now we don't need the registry reset files today. I'll talk about those later in my uh, complete demonstration of how to use GameShark Software Code Creator. The software you'll be using to communicate with your N64 and GameShark is called GameShark Software Code Creator. And sometimes this is referred to on forums and such as G S C C. It's really the same thing, it's just, you know, G, S, C, C. So, that's the way it is. Go into there, and you're going to run G, S, C, C, E, X, E. Okay, now you're going to go up to File, Configuration, and you're going to do Auto Detect Settings, right here. Your device was successfully found in Settings Set. This means that my game chart is communicating with my computer flawlessly. Now, sometimes, if it does not communicate flawlessly, you will need to run some registry reset files, the ones I talked about earlier, and those will reset your registry so that it's like your game chart Pro was never corrected or connected to your computer before. Okay, so now you're going to click Save, and Settings are saved. Now, the main thing you're really going to care to use this whole software thing for is just to the code list. The code list function is pretty useful. You open up the window here and you have all these options. Do not pay attention to what's in the file menu. It's generally not important. All the action is going to be going on in these two boxes here and all the buttons down here. So we're going to scroll down. We don't really care how many games we have. We just want you to see everything that's going on. So you have an option here. Download to above. You're going to click that in order to see all the games on your game chart. So we're going to do that. And it's going to flash this. And it now shows all the game and codes you have on your Nintendo 64 Game Chart Pro. Now, these are GoldenEye 007 codes. And as you can see, there are actual codes right here. And you can <laughs> modify them and everything like that. It's pretty neat. But we don't need that right now. 
What we're going to show you that's really cool and what will be a lifesaver to save your game chart from corruption and stuff like that. You're going to click download to file. And what that does is download a text file containing all of your games A to Z of all your codes and everything. It's like a complete codeless download. Picture Action Replay DS. Sort of the same concept. Okay, so we're going to call this Game Shark is Awesome! Exclamation point. And then we're going to click Save. And we're going to save to the desktop because it's easy to find. Wow. It's going to flash this, and this means that the progress bar is showing you that it's dumping all of the stuff in your Game Shark Pro. And something went wrong, and it seemed to just freeze up right there. I don't know what's going on. We'll try this again. Apparently, 1080 and all that o those other games do not exist on this Game Shark. If so, I don't know why it detected them and said they were there when they really weren't. So we're going to click download the file again, and so hopefully it should work this time. Awesome. We're going to do our previous download. Game Shark is awesome. And then save. <coughs> Say yes to overwrite. Okay. Now we are really screwed up. Let me try to do this again. Sometimes this will happen, people. Uh, you can't. You cannot depend on the Game Shark here. I mean, a lot of stuff can go wrong with it. It's pretty finicky stuff. So, in any event that you have problems like I'm having here, you just power off. Wait like five seconds. Keep Game Shark Software Co Creator open. Do not close it. Power on. Ooh. Maybe we gotta leave it off a little bit longer. Seems like a hard freeze. You're gonna wanna take out your parallel cable here. Take out the Game Shark and put it back in the game console. Put the parallel port back into the game shark here. Okay. And then you're gonna wanna make it detect it. You're gonna have to get the terminals and 64 tech terminals on your game shark. Uh, why did this have to happen right now? This isn't good. Maybe I just corrupted my only working game shark, guys. I know what I'll be spending my next 20 bucks on. Oh my goodness. Wow. You seriously kidding me, right? I mean, come on. There's no way. L luckily, I have my code list back up. Yay! So there it is, it's working. So we're going to try this again. Go to File, Configuration, Auto Detect Settings, Save. Now we're going to do Download to Above. They're already downloaded, so you can't do that again. Okay, so now we're going to go to Download the File and Save as a new name just so that we don't get any more errors. I'm going to call it by my author name. Okay. Save. Now, I don't know what which went on. I mean, it doesn't really seem to be downloading the file correctly. So, this is where the registry reset files come in. You go into the registry reset files here. They are actually called this in a download. You're going to run both of these files. Here we go. And I'll throw up this notification. Are you sure you want to add the information and see blah 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 blah. Ye old registry reset files. Ye old registry reset files. Remove all GC, GSCC 2K reg entries dot reg into the registry. Say yes. Information and see blah 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 blah. All all GSCC 2K reg entries dot reg has been successfully entered into the registry. <coughs> Say OK. You're going to run reset code file location. Here we go. And then you do 
this, yes, okay. Now, go back into GameShark Software Code Creator. Rerun it. Go to File, Configuration, Auto Detect Settings, Save, and Code List. Say no to selecting a bitmap. Okay, now I'm going to click Download to Above. Yes, it's working. See, those registry refet, reset files do magic. Download to file, and we're going to call it, uh, how about Game Sharks Suck. Okay. Now, save, and it is dumping the code list all the way onto your computer. Finally, we successfully did it. So now, say you want to store your code list on here. You can store as many as you want, but you can only upload one file to your game chart, as far as I know. Because when you upload a file, it overwrites what's already there. So you're going to click if you want to upload your code list back onto it. Say your game chart gets corrupted, can't access like all the stuff here, but you can get to the menu. As long as you can get to the menu, you can reflash your game chart with the new code list. Like I said earlier, the GameShark firmware, firmware seems to be pretty dependent on the actual GameShark code list to run. And if the code list is corrupted, it'll like do serious bad things to your GameShark. So you want to make sure that it's always healthy and stuff like that. So we're going to click Upload File and find the file GameSharks Suck, which we just made. Click Open, and it just uploaded it into your GameShark. The above file was successfully uploaded to your cheat device. It should be rebooting the system now. If not, please press reset on your system in 5 through 10 seconds. Say OK, and you're done. As you can see, the screen froze over here. That's no big deal because you basically just reset all the code list stuff on your game chart with a new copy. So you just power off, wait 5 seconds. Close GameStar Software Code Creator because we don't need it anymore. <coughs> and this one. And no signal. Okay. So you just power on. Yeah. Once you actually upload the code list, you don't really need your parallel cable in there anymore, right? So you just take it out. And it's best to take out your GameStar and put it back in just to make sure everything is like all the static entries and all the static electricity and stuff being transferred from the console to your game shark is like you know done away with so we're going to press power and then it counts down everything appears to be a okay a little bit of a lag between three and two there and here's the menu now we're going to go down with our controller and select cheat codes as you can see everything is right here just where it needs to be here's all my golden i007 codes i'm going to press b and then you can see everything's on there so we're going to power off and that's pretty much it you have uh that's pretty much how you get your game chart code to communicate with your computer and uh, i hope i didn't leave anything out i hope this was very informative and uh, if I did leave anything out, just shoot me a message and I'll be sure to get back to you of what your problem is and, and help you fix your problem and everything like that. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. Check out some of my other videos. And uh, see you around with another video on YouTube. Thank you. <coughs> Goodbye.